Hello, my high def friends. I have to sync the other camera. Uh, make sure you do me a favor, friends, and uh, hit subscribe as I begin. It means a lot when you do that. It puts us up higher on search engines, and it gets our uh, message out to more people. The show is already on the Media Speaks here, my channel there, uh, youtube.com slash the correct views. Keep it going. Keep showing it to people. Let people know what they're hearing. It doesn't matter whether or not they like me. I don't care. Everything I give you is sourced. You're going to find it right here on Fact Cam. So here we go, friends. <coughs> There's a cough in your ear. Welcome aboard. RT, January 18th. This is dated. Risk of a nuclear theft increasing. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, I do the uh, massive Fukushima update once a month. And that lets you know everything that's been going on with Fukushima. Uh, the meltdown, the radiation. I also cover all things nuclear um, globally. Whether it's Iran... And the fact that they're building a nuclear power plant on the most worrisome earthquake area in the entire world. Um, the same scientists that warned us about Fukushima's danger are warning us about the danger with this Bashir nuclear plant in Iran. We cover it. We cover North Korea. We cover um, Chernobyl, which, believe it or not, is still having ramifications. If you don't believe me, look up Belarus, uh, Chernobyl deformities. Don't do it while you're eating. And uh, you'll see exactly what I mean. Well, let me show you this here. A nuclear watchdog group warns that despite efforts to secure nuclear material, nations are still vulnerable to theft, as well as acts of sabotage or cyber attacks, which could enable terrorists to obtain nuclear materials or trigger a dangerous meltdown. I personally have always been intrigued by this because I'm sure if anybody thinks about it at all or puts any thought into it at all, this will become very obvious. Nuclear power plants, the reactors, do not by and large go online. Uh, many of them are still running XP. That's fact. But, um... The, they don't go online. What, what you're dealing with here is with updates and perhaps they're unwisely using jump drives from computers that have been online. Uh, beyond espionage, I don't know of any other way that this would happen. If anyone is in the field, feel free to let me know. Uh, 24 states still have 2.2 uh, pounds or more of weapons, usable nuclear materials. And nearly 4.4 uh, million pounds of weapons, usable nuclear material, remain stored around the world. Much of it still vulnerable to theft. Uh, this is from Sam Noon, chair of the Nuclear Threat Initiative. Um, it's from a report, 2016 NTI Nuclear Security Index, uh, Theft and Sabotage. Now, for those of you that don't know, this isn't science fiction. This is a matter of even if you have, if you don't make the bomb in the mushroom cloud that you just saw on the screen, if you, even if you don't have all that, we're talking about the material that is left over, the tangible, you can hold it, this material, if sprinkled around, <clears throat> say the mall, <clears throat> could wreak havoc on the entire city. Do you understand that? Um, look up nuclear accident in Brazil and see what happens when somebody accidentally exposed cesium while doing uh, scrapping. It happens. If it happens on purpose and happens in the right area, the ramifications can be never-ending. The, the, the illnesses and mass death and sickness that would come afterwards would be unprecedented to anybody that wasn't in uh, Japan, perhaps, during the end of World War II. It says the NTI index ranks nations in terms of their safeguards for keeping nuclear explosive materials protected. Alarmingly, the report found that more than 80% of all nuclear explosive materials are held by militaries whose practices and safeguards are not covered by international agreements on security of such materials. The report urged all nuclear weapon states to agree on a set of security precautions to implement. 
I could say yes and no. <clears throat> the trouble is uh, that would make it easier to uh, get in, you would think. But he's right about this. We are in a race between cooperation and catastrophe, and the world's leaders must run faster, said Nune, a former Senate Armed Services Committee chair. Well, I don't think they should all be exactly the same, but I think they should all have to do a minimum. After that, different countries are going to go beyond that, hopefully, maybe not, uh, go beyond that in whatever ways they see fit. But I think there should be a mandatory must-do. Yeah, I would agree with that. In 2014, the index listed seven countries that were taking the most important steps in preventing the theft of nuclear materials through their elimination, but two years only Uzbekistan had done so. This could be a huge, huge problem. Um, Sweden earned first place for states without, with or without less than one kilogram of weapons, nuclear material. Uh, very, very good at keeping themselves safe in Sweden. Um, unfortunately, um, 24 states <clears throat> that did poorly were Australia, Japan, North Korea, of course, came in dead last. France and the United Kingdom score the highest among states, but they are also the most improved. So I guess America isn't at the bottom of that. But we know after what Bill Clinton allowed at Los Alamos, look up Chinagate, that this is a, it's a risk, friends. It's a real risk. RT, L.A. will pay over $24 million to wrongfully convicted men who spent decades in jail. The trouble with this is this comes out of the taxpayer's money. And I'm not saying he shouldn't get it. He absolutely should get it. Excuse me. But what I'm saying is, dying of thirst for you, those of you that can't see me. This, <clears throat> they knew when they did it that they were convicting an innocent man. And they went ahead and did it anyway. The Los Angeles City Council voted Tuesday to pay $16.7 million and $7.6 million to Cache Register and Bruce Lisker, respectively, who were arrested as in teens and spent a combined total of 60 years in jail for a crime that they did not commit. Now, I understand that errors happen. I, I absolutely get that in every way. But what we're talking about here isn't really an error. What we're talking about is it sounds like they were very much aware, I'm going to get into it in a minute, that these people were innocent. And they went ahead and pushed this false narrative anyway and got it pushed through to such a degree that it ruined these people's lives. Was that 30 years apiece, I guess, is what they're saying that these poor people went through? While the two cases were independent of one another, they share a common complaint against the Los Angeles Police Department. Detectives concocted evidence against Reg Register and Lex Lisker. Each man's overturned conviction and lawsuit against the city stated. I can't see these 30, I can't get these 34 years back, but I hope that my case can help make things better for others. Though improving the way the police get identifications and other reforms, Register said in a statement released by his attorneys Tuesday, according to the Los Angeles Times. I bet you he wanted to say other things, too. Register settlement may be the biggest sum of its kind in the history of Los Angeles, his lawyers contend. Register was released on December of 2013 after 34 years in prison for a 1979 murder in West L.A. In West L.A. He was 19 when he was wrongfully convicted. While police accepted one neighbor's claim to have heard gunshots and see Register fleeing the scene, contradictory evidence was dismissed. They wouldn't even listen to the evidence that proved him innocent. Why? Because they want to get those conviction numbers up. They don't give a damn if you're innocent or not. One of the neighbor's sisters, it says, told police that um, account of the lie, while a second sister told police they had the wrong suspect. The first sister, Sheila Vanderkam, typed Cash Register's unusual name, it's his real name with a K, into a registry search decades later. Very funny play on words there. Then upon seeing that he was still in jail, it contacted the register's lawyers, leading to a reopening of the case and his clearing. 
Lisker won his freedom back in 09, just now getting his money, by the way, after 26 years behind bars for a 1983 murder in Sherman Oaks. At the age of 17, he was wrongfully convicted of murdering his 66-year-old mother, who was stabbed in the back inside of her home. Lisker always claimed that he saw her motionless on the floor through a window, then broke into the house for help. House for help. I'm dying of thirst, friends. Police pinned the crime on Lisker using faulty evidence, including a prisoner informant's testimony, but the claims were eventually debunked in court, exonerating Lisker. The LAPD had said that it was physically impossible that Lisker's story of seeing his mother from outside could be true. But Los Angeles Times reporters and experts showed otherwise. Another piece of evidence police claimed conclusively showed Lisker's guilt was a bloody shoe print in the bathroom. But the LAPD analysis and FBI expert testified against that theory as being successfully as well. So friends, what they did was knowingly convict people of crime. This, two stories right in a row. Don't tell me this is rare. You're, you're seeing things like this more and more. And of course, we've, we're now a decade or more into DNA proving this corruption again and again when the evidence was almost overwhelming in favor of the person who was convicted. It's very, very frightening. Um, Kit Daniels, prison plan, an Islamic murder. Christian, girl ex Christian girls exist to pleasure Muslim men. This is from a Muslim killer. Now, again, this is an attack on Islam. It's an attack on this idea that somehow Europe, and to some degree the U.S., has fallen for this notion that only the poor and needy are leaving Syria. When we have documentation that ISIS has said repeatedly that their goal was to create a mass exodus so that they could assimilate into it, sneak into the countries, and kill people like they did in Paris. Even with documentation of this, they're being let in without being vetted. And we've covered on this show prior, you didn't go to Ellis Island back in the, uh, the days of bring me your tired and your, uh, I forget the exact quote. You didn't go to Ellis Island and get immediately dumped into New York City proper. You were there for sometimes up to a couple months to make sure that you weren't a danger, to make sure that you weren't carrying illnesses that were going to kill half of New York City, that kind of thing. Um, this idea of just letting people roam into your country <clears throat> is unheard of to me. How that could be okay with anybody, I'll never understand. Um, and a small number, but significant percentage-wise, of these people are creating a, lot, creating a lot of havoc. We just covered the uh, disgusting rape of a young boy on the last episode, and things aren't much happier now. A group of Muslims <clears throat> reportedly mowed down three Christians with their car, killing one of them while claiming Christian girls are only meant for the, to pleasure Muslim men. And no, I'm not saying all Muslims believe this. Pakistani police also are slow to investigate the January 13th attack by four Muslims who spotted the girls while they were walking home to, from the, to the Christian community of Bowala and proceeded to flirt with them unsuccessfully. So they're even in their own little city and they're being bothered, their own community. How dare you run away from us? Christian girls are meant for only one thing, the pleasure of Muslim men, one of the murders shouted. Well, I would argue that these pigs aren't Muslim men at all. I mean, really, pigs can copulate. Show me something that proves you're a man, jerk. The man then rammed their cars into the girls. Two girls fell to the ground, one's hip was broken, the other's ribs were shattered, journalist Raymond Ibrahim reported. The youngest, Karan Misia, or Misa, age 17, flew up in the air and crashed into the speeding car's windshield, and the killers laughed as Misa died from her injuries. Uh, I'm agreeing for once with Louis Farrakhan here. They need to be vetted because our policies have led to us being so hated in the world. That if we don't watch who comes in, we're done. I mean, Louis Farrakhan is 150% right when he says that. 
And he's been doing a lot to reach out. He used to be quite a divisive person, and I've noticed lately he has been uh, less... Le he was a racist, plain and simple, and he seems to be less of that these days. Which is good, because if you can't at least get along with people that you don't agree with, then you're going to end up with something like ISIS. So I support the talking of all sides here. But this isn't talking. You don't let people like this into your country so you can talk to them. In any other nation, the perpetrators would be arrested, convicted for murder, and sentenced for a long term. Human rights activist Wilson Claudry said, Violence against Christians is rarely investigated and highly, un and highly unlikely to be met with justice. And it's okay to do whatever you want to Christians. Women have a low sat status in Pakistan, but none more so than Christian women who find themselves under the grip of terror, especially after this attack. And let me ask you, where, where are the feminists? Uh, uh, I can't find them anywhere. It says, meanwhile, in Lubin, Germany, a pregnant woman was sexually assaulted, and it was visible that she was pregnant, assaulted by six Muslim immigrant migrants, whatever you want to call them, who only st stopped their attack when a bystander stepped in and distracted them. And, of course, we know about the rapes in New Year's Eve and him bragging that I am Syrian and Merkel says you must be good to me. Wond wonderful news, isn't it? Listen to this. They're getting off the we're killing each other thing. As somebody very close to me, like four or five years ago, had their house so unbelievably swarmed by bedbugs that nobody would go and see them. And yes, that includes me. If that makes me an awful person, then so be it. But I have no desire. But I remember thinking, what is this? I mean, this was something you heard about. I'm a big old movie fan. Something you heard about in the Laurel and Hardy days. It wasn't something that is really going on today. Well... I guess it seems to be. And Canton, Ohio is one of the, where I'm at, one of the worst places in the nation for it. So I'm going to report on it, um, comment on it, I should say. Chicago leads, leads the way here, but um, I've heard that it's because we don't use DDT anymore. Well, I'm telling you, DDT is much worse for you than a bed bug is. So if you had to pick, you'd pick the bed bug. But the point is bigger than this. Bed bugs were never news when they were kept in the ghettos and the slums. But now that you're finding them in major hotel chains, now that you're finding them where people with money can go, now, of course, it's a problem. They could have found ways to have effectively killed these things. And uh, I, have, I was told uh, by the person, I'm not going to say their name on air, who had these, and they, they do make all or natural organic uh, sprays that work. But for the most part, I guess if you get them, you have to get rid of pretty much everything that you own. And I guess my bigger point here is you notice it's only, it's only a problem once it starts to affect the rich. I live in an area code uh, in Canton, Ohio, that's not necessarily the most abundant in the, in the city. Where I'm at is... Eh, but... I've been hearing about it more and more and more, and I th again I thought it was something I I thought it was something that was happening in the uh, you know Molary and Curly days you know sleep tight don't let the bed bugs bite. Well, Chicago tops the bed bug list for the fourth straight year. I didn't even know people were keeping track of this for four years. It says bed bugs have apparently taken up long term residency in Chicago based on a new report of the pest control orchid. Um. Also, um, pests were spotted in multiple cities, cities in Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, and Kentucky. Um, it said bed bugs, and of course, they travel in luggage. And I'm not going to do a whole dissertation on bed bugs, but if you are in Chicago, LA, Washington, New York, Columbus, Philly, Detroit, Cincy, Richmond, Baltimore, you are in the top 10. I'm scrolling up for those of you that want to see where they're at. Look at all these cities. San Diego, St. Louis, Louisville, uh, Decatur, Kansas City, Missouri, Alabama, uh, Honolulu, Al Albany, Schenectady, Myrtle Beach. What, what the hell is going on? It really does seem like uh, biblical days here. I'm dead serious. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, reminding you to go here. Sticker junkie. Why? Because they make really cool stickers like this. This one was a lot nicer before I scuffed it up. They're a sponsor of the show, and they make amazing stickers. I can show you exactly what their stickers look like. They're awesome. 
if you go in to the promo code when you check out and type in the correct views or correct views, you're going to get a discount even further. And you're going to get stickers that you absolutely love. So make sure that you go there and remember Sticker Junkie. Also, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. He writes fiction, he writes poetry, he writes everything, and you're going to want to read it. So go to Facebook.com and tell him, Mike McLaughlin, I heard about you from The Correct Views. What is that? <coughs> it is uh, that time <coughs> for the dumb, dumb, dumb day of the day. Excuse me for barking in the damn mic. I don't have a mute button like Rush does, and uh, I'm getting over a cold. Although, thanks to my vitamins, I almost didn't have the cold at all. Look up how to almost never get sick on my channel. It's free. It'll tell you how to get over a cold in no time. Um, I postpone the show, and whenever I do that, you guys know that I give you a very long show. And I'm going to give you three fails today instead of just uh, the normal one dumdy of the day. Uh, it's the 27th, so the Dunce Cap of the Month Award is coming very soon. These are all social justice warrior fails. Fa fails. People that think, oh, racism, oh, sexism. Instead of just doing things to help the races get along, they do things to cause further division. And everything is racist. Um, I DJ in a number of places. And you know what? The only places that ever have a major issue are places to play hip-hop. And people say that this is something that you're dealing with, at least a number of issues. And they say, well, you're just projecting that onto a color. No, that's just as true, whether or not you're white or Asian or anything else. For some reason, this is projected as black. Hip-hop, as it's seen today with Drake and Fetty Wap, is not what most black people would consider their culture. If you called that black culture, I think most black people would call that very racist. And you know what? They should, because it's crap. But when you say something like that, and you start talking to people, there's always some people, and I'm just using a for instance here, that will go ahead and say that that is racist. That is not racist. Any more than saying, when you have a heavy metal fest, you're going to have a larger number of Satanists at your uh, event. That would be highly offensive to people like me, who are Christian and love heavy metal. However, you're certainly going to see more Satanists at a heavy metal fest than you're going to see at a reggae fest. Okay? That's not racist either. That's not something somebody would say because I'm white. It's something somebody would say because I'm true. To say that heavy metal culture is white culture would be absolutely untrue as well. But these people do not speak that way. Because whether they are black, or female, or gay, or whatever it is, these social justice warriors feel like they have to somehow create division where there isn't any, or worse than any minor division that might already be there. And I'm going to give you three of them in a row. Ebony Editor would all be easier on Bill Cosby if he had supported Black Lives Matter. So basically, we don't mind you raping someone as long as you support the racist movement that is Black Lives Matter. Listen to this. Is Hannibal Burris making a joke about the respectability I'm going to talk and over it because if I don't, they're going to flag this. me on YouTube. And I keep thinking to myself, we were ultimately more interested as a, as a people, not just black folks, as Americans, in preserving this, no, image, this, is ridiculous. this it's coming. notion of Bill Cosby. Right. Then in understanding, I'm going to get to her in, reply. I don't want to. Say if Mr. Cosby didn't have that sort of respectability politics, you know, heavy-handed against single mothers and complicated-sounding names and wearing your pants low. And so if you deliberately name your kids something stupid, Bill Cosby was not supposed to point it out. If we say that you look like an idiot wearing your pants down, then we're not supposed to uh, support Bill Cosby. If he's against single mothers because they didn't at least wait, if they didn't wait till they were married, didn't at least use some kind of 99 cent condom, then you're somehow racist. So it's okay to rape somebody with drugs, or at least more supportive, if you support that viewpoint. Oh, that makes it, that makes it okay to rape? 
because you support people wearing their pants hanging down named Shaquilla who got pregnant at the age of 12. This is ridiculous. Say that wasn't who he was. Say that You're he not supposed to pick on hip hop. I don't know of too many white songs that use the word nigga. I happen to hate the word. I don't know too many white songs that talk about slapping your girlfriend or cheating on your girlfriend as if it's a badge of honor. And again, it's all colors and all races. Country music praises alcoholism, and that is equally stupid. Um, we're not going down the color hole here. This is a stupid culture. And she is attacking Bill Cosby for attacking that culture, but she is not attacking Bill Cosby for being a rapist. Was a supporter of the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. right? Say that he yeah. was a leftist. Say that he was really on our side, quote unquote, politically. Would we be having this conversation? How willing would people be to turn their backs on him or to say, you know? Oh, so it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. Okay, that, that's our first dumdy of the day. I'm not even going to go into any more of that one. It makes me sick. Um, Notre Dame professor calls permissive gun laws a manifestation of racism. Campus reform, Anthony Gutkowski. I'll tell you something else. Um, Why didn't straight out of Compton get a Grammy nomination, an Academy Award nomination? Because Easy was a worse person than Bill Cosby. Easy had AIDS, and was sleeping around with groupies who did not know that he had AIDS. He was not wearing a condom. He knew that he was giving them a death sentence, especially in the time period that he was doing it. And they changed the entire culture of rap from one of creativity to one of miscegenism, violence, and dr drug culture. Now again, I'm sure you can look at me. Do have I ever smoked a bowl? No, 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 no. Okay, I'm not saying I'm against everything. I'm not saying I'm this Puritan kind of person because I'm not. But I'm saying that they brought far more, Easy e brought far more harm to people than Bill Cosby did. At least Bill Cosby didn't give them a life of sickness after he uh, raped them. I mean, they're both sick people. But the point is, you're not allowed to say any of that. You're not, because it could somehow bait it into color, and that's why I'm dealing with it on the dumbity of the day. A professor of philosophy at the University of Notre Dame published an op-ed in the New York Times linking lenient gun laws in America to racism. Idiot Professor Gary Gooting argued, permissive gun laws are a manifestation of racism, and invoked hatred of racism as a motivation for the gun control movement. According to Guting, high exposure to guns in largely poor black neighborhoods along with low restrictions on gun ownership permeates the culture of racism. No. Perhaps having a culture given to the industry or the, the, the entertainment industry that lets you